everyone, welcome to academicenglishacademy.com. Today is March 11th, and this is our first custom lesson. This is an actual classroom lesson that you would experience if you were taking tutoring lessons or you signed up for the regular 12-week course. This is a beginner lesson in pronunciation, reading, and writing. Each part is going to help you with the next part, okay? So, there are three sections. The first is pronunciation, then I'll be reading out loud, and then we'll be answering some guided reading questions. Okay. Now, if you watched the last pronunciation video that I did, you will remember that we had certain words on here that are part of this lesson. This lesson is about Helen Keller, a very famous American, okay? And I'm going to show you some notes that I have here to help you with pronunciation. For the name Helen Keller, there is her picture right there. Um, I broke it into syllables. There are four vowels. They all make a sound, so it's Helen Keller. Tap this out on your desk or on your laptop at home. Okay, so I just put number four there for four syllables. Here is Alabama. Again, four A's and they all make a sound. Alabama. So I put four for four syllables. Here we have the word fever. Two E sounds. Fe fever. Here the word is talk. Talk. One vowel, one syllable. Um, here I did a couple of additional notes. I crossed off the L. You can do that or you can put silent L. And I also spelled it without the L, which is called phonetic spelling. Okay, you can do any of these to help your pronunciation. Again, the word is talk, short A sound. Next is the word blind, the long I, blind, one syllable. Next, deaf, the A is silent. So you can cross it off, write silent A, or phonetic spelling, D-E-F, the short E, deaf. Here is the word difficult. Three vowels, they each make a sound. Diff, I, cult. So I put the number three there for three syllables. Here is the word angry. Angry. Two sounds, two vowels, two <laughs> syllables. Now the Y on the end makes a long E sound. Angry. Okay, here there are two words, so I split it up, okay? The first word, this is the name of the school that um, Helen's teacher, Anne, came from. The first word is Perkins. Two vowel sounds, the E and the I, both short sounds. Perkins, two, vowel, two syllables. Institute, institute. Institute. Three syllables, three sounds, and this E on the end is silent. We don't pronounce this E. This is a silent E, so I wrote silent E there next to the three. Next is the state Massachusetts. It's kind of a difficult one to pronounce even for English-speaking Americans. There are four sounds, four syllables. Mass a chu sits. Massa chu sits. Here is the word parents. We have an A and E. Parents. Two syllables. Here 
is a name, an American name. This woman's name is Anne. The first word, Anne, has one syllable and the E is silent. So I wrote one and silent E. Her last name has three syllables. There's three vowels and three sounds. Sullivan. Anne Sullivan. Next, we have the word sign language. Sign has a silent G and a long I. And it's one syllable, sign. The word language has two syllables, um, but right over here, the end part, the G sounds more like a J. So I did some phonetic spelling. Lang is fine, lang -wich. It sounds like W-I-J. So it's sign language. Practice that, okay? Hands, one A, one vowel, one sound. Hands, one syllable. Okay, next I have the word everything. This E here is silent, okay? We do not say everything. That's not how it's pronounced. It's everything. Again, this Y sounds like a long E. Everything. Three vowel sounds. This one does not count because it's silent. Next, I have the word sign. We just saw that, okay? Next is the word touch. There's two vowels, but only the U makes a sound. The O is silent. So I just put number one for one syllable, touch, and then I spelled it T-U-C-H. Okay, next we have the word of braille. Okay, two syllables, braille. Um, the E at the end is silent. And this really makes kind of a Y sound in the middle, braille. So I put a Y in there. Braille, and the silent E is not pronounced. Next, I have the word reading. The A is silent. There's only two syllables, reading. Next is the word people. There's actually um, a silent O and a silent E at the end. People, two syllables, people. Next we have the word fingers. There are two vowels and they both make a sound. Fingers. And finally we have the word alphabet. Those are the letters in any language. Um, a special note here is this PH sounds like an F. Whenever you have the PH combination you will have an F sound. Put your teeth, your top teeth, right near your bottom lip. Alphabet. Um, and there's three syllables. The A, both A's and E make their sign, sound. Alphabet. Okay, that was part one. So now you may need to review the words again. You can pause the video if you need to and go back to the beginning. Next, I'm moving on to the reading portion. Okay, here is part one of Helen Keller's life. Helen Keller was born on June 27, 1880 on a farm in Alabama. One special note I'd like to make here, 
Some people have trouble pronouncing the years in English. You start with the first two numbers. This is 18, and then we have 80. So the year is pronounced 1880. When Helen was 18 months old, she became sick. She had a very high fever. Helen became blind and deaf. She could not see or hear. She also did not learn how to talk. If you are a Spanish speaker or a Portuguese speaker, be very careful about pronouncing the sounds at the end of the words, okay? A lot of Spanish and Portuguese speakers do not pronounce the word endings because you don't always pronounce the word endings in your language. That's something you need to work on in English, okay? Especially with the word months, make sure your tongue is between your teeth. Months. She became sick, blind, deaf, talk, not. Make sure you're pronouncing the consonant sounds at the end of the words. Helen was a difficult and angry child. In 1887, when she was almost seven years old, her parents sent a letter to the Perkins Institute for the Blind in Massachusetts. Helen's parents wanted to find a special teacher for her. Ann Sullivan was a teacher for the blind and deaf. She went to live with Helen and her family. Anne showed Helen sign language. Anne made a word with her hands and let Helen touch her hands so she could feel the different signs. Helen learned that everything had a name. Helen learned very quickly. She learned the sign for everything she could touch. She then learned to read Braille. <laughs> Braille is a special kind of reading system for blind people. Blind people can touch a page and feel dots with their fingers. These dots are letters of the alphabet. Okay, now the next part, part three, are the guided reading comprehension questions. If you need to listen to the story again, pause the video, go back, and listen one more time. I'm going to move on to the reading questions. Okay, now that we worked on our pronunciation and you could listen to the story, we're going to look at some guided reading questions. Now, remember I've discussed this before. First, you read the question. Next, you go into the reading to find the answer. Okay? Let the questions guide your reading. This will make things much easier for you. Question one, when was Helen Keller born? Helen Keller was born on June 27, 1880. Now, one thing I'd like to point out, the directions say, use information from the reading to answer all questions in complete sentences. It is extremely important that you're writing complete sentences. This will help your English and this will improve your writing. You need complete sentences. What state was Helen born in? She was, Helen was born in Alabama. Number three, what happened to Helen 
when she was 18 months old. Helen got sick with a high fever. Number four. What did this high fever do to Helen? The high fever caused Helen to become deaf and blind. Okay, now let's take a look at number five, please. Number five is a fill in the blank, okay? You just need to find the missing word. Helen did not learn to talk. Number six, what kind of child was Helen? Helen was a difficult and angry child. Let's move on, please. Now, I know I have the answers here for you because this is just a sample lesson. If you're in one of our tutoring sessions or you've already enrolled in our 12-week program, obviously we're not going to give you the answers for the homework assignment, but this will help you, okay, just to guide you along and just to see if you can look for the answers yourself and then check them against what we have here. Okay, let's look at number seven, please. When Helen was seven years old, what did her parents decide to do? Her parents decided to write a letter to the Perkins Institute for the Blind. Number eight, where is the Perkins Institute for the Blind located? The Perkins Institute for the Blind is located in Massachusetts. Number nine, what did Helen's parents want to find? They wanted to find a special teacher for Helen. Number 10, who was Helen's teacher and where did she move to? Number 10 is a special question because there are two parts. Who was Helen's teacher and where did she move to? Many advanced students often miss these simple questions because they're not comfortable with two-part questions. You really need to pay close attention and become familiar with these questions. So the answer is Helen's teacher was Ann Sullivan and she moved to Alabama to live with Helen and her parents. Let's take a look at number 11. What did Ann Sullivan teach Helen? Ann taught Helen sign language. Number 12. How did Helen learn sign language from Ann Sullivan? Ann Sullivan made a word with her hands and then Helen touched her hands to feel the different signs. What did Helen learn? Helen learned that everything has a name. Here's another fill in the blank. We have two missing answers. Helen learned to read Braille, which is a special reading system for blind people. And finally, number 15. How do people read Braille and what do the dots represent? Another two-part question. First, how do people read Braille and what do the dots represent? People read Braille by touching dots on a page with their fingers and the dots represent letters of the alphabet. Okay, so use this. First, to guide your reading, to help you understand the reading, first you read the questions, 
listen, listen to me read first. Then you read the questions and go back in the reading and find the answers one by one. Question one first and then two, okay? Take it slow, pause the video as many times as you need to. Most importantly, can you write in complete sentences? Could you find these missing answers without me giving them to you? Okay, so practice and I will see you next week. So happy pronunciation, reading, and writing. Bye for now.